Hello, everyone, and welcome to our FLAF 2022 Shorts Programming Block Q&A section. Uh, my name is Kirsten, and I'm a part of the programming team this season. Uh, today, we have filmmakers whose films are a part of the Interconnectivity Short Block. This film block explores themes of family, lineage, spirituality, and self. Uh, to get us started, I would love to introduce us to our filmmakers, uh, and it's a pleasure to speak with you all today. I'd like to begin by asking if you could tell us a little bit about yourselves and your film. Uh, Caroline, if we could start with you, maybe. Sure. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for, well, having watched our beautiful and I think, uh, well, films that were made by with a lot of passion and heart. Um, just very quickly. So my name is Caroline Pelican. I'm a German Peruvian filmmaker, um, documentary focused. And my film shows, well, two very opposing worlds, I would say. On the one hand, you have a character called Nachi, who is um, an indigenous healer, so he calls himself Curandero, um, and he heals with the Washuma plant. Um, and on the other uh, side of it is me, so I'm part of this film. I became part of this film because it wasn't supposed to be. Um, but I found Nachi in a very difficult moment of my life. I had just lost my, my mom um, after having lost my, my dad already. So I was in a moment of processing a lot of grief and um, kind of trying to connect, I would say. So the film is called Conexión Washuma. It speaks a lot about connection and connecting past, present and future. And in a way, trying to connect with, um, well, in this case, my, my parents. So the past. Um, and it's a film where I see him or find, find Nachi um, as a spiritual guidance, I would say, even though I'm not a very spiritual person, but it's, that's why I'm kind of keep saying it's this very opposing, two opposing worlds that in a way uh, connect to a story of, of grief and loss. Hi, I'm Florencia Manovil. I am a writer, director, so I do like fiction, um, film uh, based in Oakland, California, in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, originally from Argentina. Uh, I moved to the States when I was 18. Um, and this is a little short, this is the shortest uh, short I've ever made. Um, it's 11 minutes and um, it is about uh, basically um, intergenerational connection uh, between between my two characters. And I'm sure we'll talk more later about, about the, the substance of it. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, I, I know that we kind of delved into it like maybe a little bit, uh, but I'd like to hear about what really inspired you to make your film. So um, what inspired me to make a film, actually the film was focused uh, and was supposed to be only about Nachi. Um, I traveled to a place called Marcahuasi in, in Peru, which isn't a tourist spot or anything, but it's very much known um, to be a stone forest up at 4,000 meter. And I was intrigued by that description. Um, and I, I went there and it's under the stone forest, um, which is somewhere in the Pampa, like there's nothing else. Um, right underneath it is a little Andean village. And when we were there, when we arrived, um, we started to talk to people. I mean, that's what, as a documentary filmmaker, you always do. You start to talk to people, uh, ask more questions about the place. And people started to point out to Nachi. They, they kept mentioning uh, a certain Nachi who should go with us and talk because he's a, he's a um, they mentioned he's a, how do you say, Ungia. How do you say that in English? <laughs> A, a, guide. a guide yeah there you are there you go the word um so he's a guide and he could tell us more about the place and it's a very mystical place um and yeah we kept walking from door to door and knock on people's doors and ask are you nachi are you nachi and then once we found nachi he was he's such a kind soul um i was immediately swept away by him just just by him being him and he had this incredible knowledge not only of the place but also he shared so many things about himself and almost as a when i said guide i not it wasn't all almost like a tourist guide but almost like a spiritual guide and as i had mentioned earlier i was in a place where i had just 
had experienced an incredible loss in my life and I was really down and I was not really looking for a story. I was, I went to film school after my mom passed. Um, and that was for me, the kind of anchor to go through grief. And that's how I kind of, it kind of, for me, seemed to be almost like, like a, like a practical, right? Like I wanted to find a story that I could tell. And to me, it was him. Um, and that was the initial point where I said, I, I wanted to, I want to make a film about him. He seems to be a very interesting character. And the, the longer I visited, so it took nine visits um, throughout almost five years, because it isn't, it isn't a place where you can get easily into. I mean, it's 4,000 meters somewhere in the Pampa. It, it really takes a long drive to get there and then like a minibus and a hike um, to find that place. So we, we connected. Um, I would say, and he became more and more of, um, as I mentioned, spiritual leader for me. Not that I'm, I'm a very much a head person, I'm a city person as well, so I'm not very spiritual. Um, but there was something when my mom had passed that I was, I was missing, I was looking for it, and I was lost, um, as I can say, possibly describe it in the best words, and anyone who has experienced loss can, can, can probably understand me. And um, that's when I started to think or see in the material that I was creating in footage, when I was seeing it back, I was seeing that it was not really a story about him or not only about him. It became a story about us, actually, about our voyage of him trying to help me and of me trying to grab to an anchor to something. And um, he kept talking about this connectivity between past, present, and future, and how the washuma, which is the plant, um, the San Pedro cactus plant that can produce, well, hallucinogenic um, but visions um, that he uses, though, as to heal, that he uses to heal himself, that he uses to reveal things. Um, and he kept mentioning it that, that I should do it, but I was very much afraid. So I kept, so what I, what I was doing, I was shooting um, ceremonies with other people. So he, he became the guide, the guide of other people, but not of me. And in the end, I think after nine sessions, he said, I really want you to try it, to try it with me. And I had the trust to try it with him. And that in the end became the whole film. Um, me ending, <laughs> taking the Washuma, being on a trip that let me, it, it, nothing really happened. Um, but I do think on another level, a lot happened. Um, and the whole, there is a whole journey that the film portrays um, that basically is about, again, as I mentioned, about grief, about someone dealing with it over the course of several years, finding a very, a friendship that um, is very uncommon. I mean, I would never have, met Nachi, what are the chances to, to find someone who I really dearly love and who became a very, very important person in my life. And for that person as well, to have an interest of, of guiding me, of seeing someone who's lost and um, really knowing that the plant that he reveres and he knows that could help me. Um, yeah, well, trying to, to, make, um, to make that plant help me in a way. The inspiration for me is I'm a, I'm a parent. Um, so I have a now teenager and a lot of people in my, I'm, I'm queer, I'm part of the queer community and a lot of people in my circle don't have kids. And I had uh, dated a few people who seem to have like this bias against, um, against, the young generation or and I was noticing just kind of like you know this is sort of like throwaway disparaging attitude towards uh the young generation so I I see myself as a sort of like bridge between the two and I think that um this conversation that is my film is, is sort of where I position myself in wanting the two generations to learn from one another and um to 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 be a, a, a bridge there yeah awesome I feel like you both like really beautifully touched uh on like why it was important to develop your film so if it's all right I'd love to jump into like you discussing the favorite part of your film uh and the process of making it it I 
in in writing it, I had conversations with Gen Xers, like some folks um, from my community, uh, and that was fun. And I also uh, really kind of collaborated with my kid on the script, and she, um, you know, she like read the drafts, especially the dialogue, you know, approved, made some tweak suggestions. Um, so that that was really fun for me. It was my first time doing that with with um, with her. And um, but during the film itself, I don't know. I think there's there's a there's a moment like when the dynamic changes between them um and like the the older character like like a protective side comes out for her uh I think that's my favorite moment because I like I I love how subtle it is and I I feel like it's really emblematic of of like what sometimes the elders or like the older ones in our community like forget about you know um it's kind of this need to also protect and the fact that like everything that has been done up until now was to protect the younger generations and for them to have an easier life where they can uh really not have to think about how hard you know it was to be queer back in the day so um at least in some places um so so yeah, so I think that is that is my favorite moment. To answer your question, I will answer your question actually with Nachi's favorite part of the film and my film crew's probably favorite part because it's um, it wasn't my favorite part at the beginning because turning the camera, and that was a decision that's been done um, in the editing part of the film, um, up until the editing, and I'm the editor of the film, I, I really wanted to make this film about Nachi and not bring myself at all into it. And I think my whole crew knew long before me, even Nachi included, that this would be more a film about, about my intentions and my, uh, my story in a way. Um, so turning the camera is always a, a really, really a process that takes so much time um, because you make yourself vulnerable, you tell your story, um, you don't want to make it a film about you, but um, there is something that, that really is deep within you that you want to tell in, in a way. Um, so Nachi said, it really, it really took me, it was a long, really hard decision to do. And in the end, when the editing was, well, we put it together, it was the obvious choice. There was only one choice to tell the story. And I think I, I remember when we watched it the first time with the crew and, and Nachi, he said his favorite part is exactly that, that I turned the camera and I didn't make this film about him because he said it never was about me. This was this was about us, so a journey, yes, but it, it was about you, but it was about your grave. It was about finding something that you that you thought you had lost. And even though the film um, itself doesn't doesn't bring a solution to anything. I mean, there, there is no solution to grief as such, but um, I really hope that what the audience would take away from this, this is, is this kind of journey that we've been on and the feelings that, that it took to do. And I, I do think that the film, which is, I'm most proud of that part. I think that the intimacy between the character and the filmmaker, in this case, between Nachi and me and the film crew in itself, it comes across. I do think it's it's a very genuine film um, and it, it comes across as a journey. So you can clearly see, I think, in the film, you can distinguish the scenes that were shot during the first meeting and you can distinguish the shots that were done five years later, because I do think that there is a difference between the interaction between filmmaker and 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 the character, Nachi. Thank you for that. I'd like to also ask, what would you like audiences to walk away with overall after they watch their film? You know, they've watched your films, obviously, by this point, if they're all tuning into this lovely Q&A, but what would you really like them to know uh, from director to audience member? I have to think for a second, what would I like? I mean, I, I just, I think this journey part is really important for me. I mean, we call it Conexión Washuma. And I do think that this movie, I really would hope um, that Conexión Washuma speaks to people that 
are a little bit like me that are maybe not as spiritual or don't think too much about spirituality, but can still relate to it in some way. I do think that this film is not, again, it's not made about so many films about Washuma and this kind of journey of, of taking a hallucinogenic plant or so are often about this, this really, really strong spiritual connection. But I do think here, it just, it speaks about someone who's lost, who's in grief, who tries to find something and who in a way through that journey heals. Um, and I think that's something that everyone hopefully can relate to. And at the same time, even though it talks about something really sad and um, well, grief is always sad and loss. And um, I do think it's an uplifting film. It does give hope. It, it, it shows a friendship, again, a, a very um, uncommon friendship probably. Um, and, and it gives a really, really lovely feeling, hopefully of, of love and finding love in, in very, weird moments um, um, of your life. So it's an up and down, like life, life itself. Um, I would say, I guess maybe just a little, it would be amazing if the film left people with a, a desire to just bring a little more openness to their day and just to be open to connecting with, with uh, people of a different, lived experience, different generation, different community, different, you know, ethnicity, whatever, uh, than they are. And just, just being open to like what they can learn or, or just to new perspectives. Um, yeah. Awesome. And I have one more question that I'm just like thinking of that wasn't on my list that I dropped in the chat. Um, is there anything else that you would like audiences to know, uh, you would like them to know about yourself or any like future projects that you may be working on? Um, let's see, I am, um, I made a web series that is on Amazon that you could watch there. It's called Dyke Central. Um, I think, yeah, in my future projects, uh, I'm developing a series that I'm super excited about that is um, just about uh, sort of like what a post-capitalist uh, society could look like, but not a utopia far off in the future, but like, what does that actually look like? Because I think that, um, yeah, I, I'm really, focused on this on this idea that like um I think that like our society has a very stunted imagination for like how we can live and how we can organize ourselves as human beings it's like this is the way things have always been and like it's almost like I think as artists we spend a lot of time in the imaginary realm but but the everyday person doesn't and what we really need is like everybody to like really engage in in imagination practices um because there there are so many different ways for us to live that are not like um that that wouldn't lead us towards like uh extinction and yet we're we seem to be like just stuck on this one so i'm very excited about creating work that that can spark people's imaginations and and also show it's like okay we haven't seen it before we we have been watching all of this like dystopian stuff but like there is the i think showing people what is possible in different ways of relating and i think um i think you know creating stories of of connection and of like healthy ways of relating is to me, just as interesting as like the, the I'm actually more interesting that like the old school sort of like conflict and like clashing and, and everything going at this like worst as possible. I think that there's there's new ways of storytelling to develop um, that will actually help us evolve as a society and not that like keep reinforcing uh, our ways of being. So that's really what I'm all about right now. Uh, I know that was a little rambly, but um, I'm very excited to be on that path. And um, yeah, that's my focus right now. 
I agree with everything, Florencia. Very, very beautiful uh, summary. Um, I would just add, like, after this film, I became a really big fan. It was my first film that I've done, so Connexion Mushroom as my, my opera prima as a well short film. Um, and I became a really big fan of participatory filmmaking because I do think there there is a beauty, a really, really beauty in everyday stories and like very small stories because this film is not very, even though I said that it's it's about me, my story, it's not too revealing. I don't tell my whole background, my autobiography. I just tell a, I give a very, very tiny snippet into my story into Nachi's world. Um, and I do think that there is something beautiful in these little snippets that you can get. And all of us, we have a story. And um, I really would hope that someone who watches this film, who sees this very genuine little snippet into someone's life would maybe be inspired to tell their own story or tell their neighbor's story or tell their family's story or whatever they think, um, whatever, the, whatever the story is they want to tell. Um, I do think um, if someone takes that away as a as a message or be inspired by it, that would be really beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, stay tuned for the other Q&A panels and future events uh, as we prepare, prepare for FLOP 2022, uh, May 29th, June 5th.